Good morning. This morning we are going to look at the model that we exposed previously which has to do with the arch modeling system. We are going to look at it specifically by exposing the intuition behind the arch system, showing you how arch models look like and identify the limitation of the arch system. Stay tuned to my channel as we progress simultaneously. Development in financial econometrics has identified the use of the ASH modeling in estimating the attitude of investors towards their investments and the uncertainty surrounding their investments. And to achieve this feat, Engel in 1982 exposed or popularized the ASH modeling process or system, uh, which has to do with estimating the return to investment or the volatility of financial time series assets. Recall that in our basic econometrics assumption, the classical least square assumption, we expect that the error time will have a constant variance which is homoscedastic. But in the situation envisaged above, where investors assume that their investment is volatile, uncertain, floats with, it is expected that we are exposed to a situation that is uncertain or unequal. At that level, we will be dealing with a heteroscedastic time a variable that is unstable and unequal over time. Because the financial markets are stable or are volatile and unstable many of the time, therefore, the I system will look at the conditional variance, the conditional variance or the time bearing variance of the error term. The word conditional variance is the lag value of the dependent variable or the autoregressive term, while the time bearing variance or the heteroscedastic term will be dealing with the error term, which is the UT. In the arch modeling techniques or system, we are going to model or estimate both the main equation and the variance equation simultaneously, which implies that in the arch system, we are going to be exposed to two results. The first result will be the main equation. The second result will be the variance equation. So in the main equation, we have the main equation estimation or specification as presented in this equation one. We have the yt, which is the dependent variable, is a function of a constant term and an independent variable plus the error and error term. But in our previous class, we were told that the error term is identically independently distributed with zero mean and a constant variance as expressed in the mathematical connotation below. The error term is identically independently distributed with zero mean and a constant variance. And according to Engel, the variance of the error term is heteroscedastic because it changes over time, depending on its past or historical values, which means that the variance of the error term will depend on its one lag period or its previous lag period or the square of the previous lag period as expressed below. So if you look at the next equation we have, we actually had model or specified the error term to be a function of its previous value. These equations are the same. These two equations you are seeing here, they are the same. It's either you are using this or you are using this. So conclusively, we will now say that our variance equation will now be expressed as this while our main equation according to what we had in our equation one will be this so the intuition behind the ash model uh, or modeling system is that the conditional short-term variance or the volatility is a function of the immediate pass value of the square error term therefore the effect of the present shock depends on the size of the lag period shocks what do i mean what i mean is that the inconsistency or the fluctuation on the uncertainty in the, the financial investment many of the time is premised on the fact that the error of today is not a new error. Rather, the error today is a function of the error of yesterday. So for you to actually predict, in, to predict effectively in financial investment, you should be able to know the level of volatility in the market. You know that volatility clustering implies a situation where a wild change in the market is followed by another wild change, while a calm period is followed by another calm period or series of calm periods. So, in financial time series estimation, 
we expect that the shock inherent in today's market is a function of the shock of yesterday's market and the shock of today's market will determine the shock of tomorrow's uh, market so that is the idea behind the arch system the mutation of the arch system one cardinal limitation of the R system is that the R system looks like a moving uh, average. So this is where we will draw the cutting close this morning. I believe in my next video, I'm going to teach you how to simulate an arch test, an arch effect, uh, so how to test for the presence of an arch effect and how to stimulate an arch graph, and after which we are going to proceed with other arch uh, estimation and other host of estimation required. Thank you for staying tuned to this very short video. Thank you for listening to me and stay tuned to this channel as we progress. Thank you and God bless you.